Hey everyone, it's Maggie about with Vlogist Day 26, and today I had planned on doing a bunch of video work. It's going to do a longer vid for myself, and a blender video, and possibly another blender video, and instead a friend of mine came into town from uh, Twitter. So she's kind of a new friend to me, but it was very, very fun, and um, got to sit down and with her and her boyfriend and hang out and play some games and have some drinks and some more drinks and some more games and it was an entire day where I thought it might just be like a lunch but we were all just getting on so well that it turned into an entire day so you get a small vlog and I get a nap hopefully. Um, we ended up playing Koi Pond which is a Daniel Solis game. Uh, I did play it over Christmas and this play was much more interesting because I think it was the three player versus the two player I played it at before. Um, you have a tableau in front of you and a tableau to your side, as does the other player, and kind of a central pool. And each turn you are putting a card face down in front of you and a face down on the side, and then both of you are revealing them at the same time. And you score points uh, if you have the most of a given color on that side one. You get ribbons, and the more times you get the same color ribbons, the better. So round over round, you want the same rewards. And then... In front of you, you score, if you have three fish in your hand and four fish in front of you, you of the same color, you would score three points. So whatever the lower number is compared to your in front of you and in your hand. And lastly, you have animal cards that if they're played in front of you during the round, they key off other players' boards. And I thought the animal cards were really, really interesting because... Um, one of them keys off what they have in their side, one of them keys off of what they have in front of them, and one of them keys off of what they have in their hand at the end of the round, so whatever they're, they're scoring with. Um, so really cool interactions with that, and you, you're very much like trying to get in their heads and not play them too early so they don't uh, limit themselves, and uh, it was a really, really fun game of that. Um, then later on we played Linko, which is just one of those go-to little card games that I'll show anyone because it's just fun and smart. It's a small set collecting game and uh, you can teach it in just a couple minutes and people really start seeing the strategy after a couple turns and it's very, very good. And last we played uh, Broom Service. So Broom Service was the Kinnerspiel winner this year and um, if, if you recall, I I went into it a little snarkily going, eh, there's no way I'm going to like this more than Orleans. But after playing it, I see its family appeal more than something like Orleans does. Like, more people are going to like room service than like Orleans. It's just, it is the way it is. And the game is smart and snappy and really, really fun. It has that prediction element that I really like in a game that uh, if I can try and figure out what you're going to do, I'm going to benefit. Um, unfortunately, this evening, I did not have that skill with me. I might have left it at home. Uh, I lost a lot of actions due to my own hubris. Because in the game, uh, Broom Service, you're trying to fly around and deliver goods to towers. And you can, when you play a card, you either play the press your luck side, which is like uh, you are the brave action and you get more stuff if you get it, or you play the cowardly side, which you always get, no matter what, no one can talk, no one can interact with it, but it's a lesser value. And the number of brave actions I lost because other people played that card later, because if they play a brave action after yours of that same card, uh, you lose your entire action that round. And I did that at some very unfortunate intervals, so it was my own dumb fault, but it was still a very fun game. Um, I hope I hope at some point I might pick that game up. It's just real good, and it goes up to five players, and it plays really well at those. Um, my friends wanted to know if it played well at two players, and I think it loses a lot of the tension. The game design tried to include more tension in the two player, but I don't think it does quite the trick. Uh, because what is really fun is the the trying to figure out the cards as they come along and the, and the moment at which someone reveals whether or not they have the same card and whether you get your action and you lose that in the two players. So I don't think it's going to be great, but I don't know. Um, yeah, that's probably all for me for now. I'm going to go sleep and tomorrow night is game night, of course. So I hope to get another play of Yunnan and I think that's my goal for tomorrow and 
Uh, maybe some code names. I could use some light and lovely because I'm sleepy right now, but tomorrow I'll probably be craving some cubes. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.